Hey friends, it's Dr. Erin, and I'm here to talk to you about metabolism. And wait, don't hang up. I know you feel like metabolism is so stale, so played out at this point, and so boring, right? I know it's one of those overused words that you've started to tune out at this point. But let me tell you, because of what I do, I get millions of you coming to me with all kinds of crazy cockamamie ideas about how you're gonna get healthy and lose weight this year. You love to tell me how you're proud of yourself for getting back to the gym or how you've started taking a new supplement and you wonder what I think of it. A lot of you these days ask me about Ozempic or Manjaro. And then there's my absolute favorite, you men and women out there between 40 and 60 who are always considering hormones. And listen, all of these things might help you get ahead just a little bit. But most of the time, you're ignoring the one ginormous thing that will absolutely help you get ahead. And that is understanding your metabolism. So today we're gonna to focus on what exactly is metabolism and why should you care about it? And also answer the question of, is yours broken? Because here's the truth, about 90 plus percent of us here in the US have a broken metabolism. And then lastly, of course, we're gonna talk about what do you do to fix it? Okay, first let's try to understand why metabolism suddenly became such a buzzword and why everyone out there, including me, is suddenly a metabolic expert. The concept of metabolism is not new. Scientists have been studying metabolism for well over 100 years, so it's not just some term that suddenly showed up on social media. What changed about metabolism is our understanding of it. We used to think of metabolism as just some process that we're born with that's always happening inside of our body. Some mystery that scientists were always preoccupied with trying to understand. But now we know metabolism is something very different. It isn't just something that's randomly happening inside of you, but rather something you have direct influence over. So the very first thing I want you to understand about metabolism right out of the gate is this. If you have a healthy metabolism, you are a healthy person. If you don't have a healthy metabolism, you are not healthy, no matter how good you may look on the outside. Okay, so what is metabolism? In the simplest terms, metabolism is how your body takes energy from food and either uses it or stores it in order to keep you alive and functioning well. And let me be clear, the energy of metabolism doesn't just keep you alive and functioning, but actually determines how well you function. Your energy level determines your mood, your ability to focus and think, your ability to communicate, and even how clearly you speak. How much energy you have also determines your level of protection. Your immune system needs energy, and your body cannot defend itself against infection, disease, or even cancer without it. So metabolism is not some sort of small niche topic that you should someday learn about. It's the very foundation of whether or not you are healthy. I like analogies, so let's make this simple. Think of your body like a car. And by the way, this body is the only car you'll have for your whole life. A car's function is only as good as its fueling. If you put the wrong fuel in your car, it may function for a little while. It may sputter, it may hesitate, but because it doesn't break down completely, you might assume that everything is fine and it will work itself out. But over time, the wrong fueling day after day causes a lot of wear and tear. Parts will start to fail and whole systems will start to break down. This is what happens with metabolic disease. Metabolic disease is the slow breakdown in how your body is processing energy that happens over years from poor fueling. It's not a mystery anymore and it doesn't happen all of a sudden. So here's the point where I want to educate both patients and the the doctors out there because not enough people talk about what early metabolic breakdown looks like. We all know a story about someone who was passed from one specialist to the next year after year until finally they met the right doctor who did the right test and gave them the diagnosis they had been searching for. And on the outside, I'm congratulating them just like you. I'm genuinely happy that they finally feel seen. But on the inside, I'm doing a little eye roll. Because the truth is, you may have been lucky enough to meet the one brilliant Dr. House out there in the world. But most of the time, it wasn't that this doctor was magically somehow smarter than everyone else. It's that the disease finally progressed far enough to be easy to diagnose. What kills me in these stories is often metabolic breakdown was present for years and no one recognized it. The patient knew it was there, the body knew it was there, but 
conventional medicine didn't have a name for it yet because doctors aren't trained to recognize early metabolic disease. So let's talk about what early metabolic disease looks like. Here's another analogy for you. Think of metabolism like the energy coming into your house. If your house isn't running on full power, nothing inside of it is running right. You're still living there, but the lights keep dimming. You're still getting through your day, but it's taking a lot more effort than it should. Without enough energy, your brain feels foggy, your motivation is gone, your patience wears thin, and your body feels heavy. And most importantly, if someone doesn't live in your house, they might not recognize it. This includes your doctor. Trust me when I say doctors hate this type of patient. Not because we don't care, but because there's nothing we can do about these vague symptoms. We already know what's going to happen. You're going to come asking for tests. We're gonna run those tests, even though we already know that every single one of them is going to be normal. And both of us are gonna walk away disappointed. Typically, we try to tell you that everything's going to be okay and not to worry about it. And also, just to come back if anything changes. And of course, it will. These patients are the bane of our existence as physicians because they point out the glaring gaps in our education. We know you're not likely to get better, and yet our training doesn't teach us what to do for you. So right here, I'm just gonna insert a plug for myself and all the other metabolic experts out there. This is where we come in. If you are falsely reassured somehow that nothing is wrong at this point and you change nothing, what happens next is the next stage of metabolic disease. And how quickly this develops depends on how bad is that wrong fuel that you're putting in. This is when your machinery actually starts to break down. We start seeing problems in every organ system. These days, because of how sad our diet is, we see it very early. Quick tangent. The standard American diet is often called the SAD diet by nutrition scientists because the lab animals that are placed on the SAD diet universally die sooner. So SAD diet problems in kids can look like poor focus or behavioral problems. Do you know a kid that's been diagnosed with ADHD? Maybe take a look at their diet. In adults, this looks like fatigue, brain fog, migraines, reflux, joint pain, or just getting sick all the time. In women, this commonly shows up as hormonal disruption with missed periods, heavy periods, infertility, and PCOS. Skin, gut, and joint problems often show up first because these are the systems on your front lines. These things taken individually may not mean much, but together they tell a very clear story. In the hospital, we describe these patients as having all the things. Over time, we've come to understand all these things as the risk factors for disease. It took scientists decades to discern that there are five things in particular that develop due to poor fueling that lead to almost every disease you can name. These five things are what make up metabolic syndrome. The five criteria are high blood sugar, high blood pressure, an expanding waistline, and two cholesterol measurements, including high triglycerides and low HDL. So now I've named the majority of things that we suffer with day to day, those things that we all like to call getting old. And it's at this point that you and your doctor may be becoming buddies. You have loads of things that we could diagnose and loads of things that we can give you prescriptions for. And even though our prescriptions can help you a little bit with all of these little things that are annoying you, they still don't address the primary problem, which is your metabolism. Okay, let's go back to our house analogy, because up until this point, your appliances or your organs were all competing for limited energy. But at some point, this energy crisis becomes so bad that your body begins to go offline. This is metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome means you have a disconnect between the energy coming in and how you use it. And most often, this disconnect comes down to one hormone, insulin. Insulin is the hormone that decides whether your energy gets used or gets stored. When insulin is working properly, your house is fully powered. When insulin isn't working properly, your house is dim, even with energy coming in, but the energy is getting stored in the garage. This is why so many people with metabolic dysfunction are gaining fat and also feeling exhausted at the same time. You should know about 20 or 30% of normal weight people actually have significant metabolic disease. And that's unfortunate because it's the overweight 
weight problem that most people tend to address first. This is why I specialize in weight loss. It's really my backdoor way of making you healthy. Being overweight is not the only sign. That's why I've told you about all the other signs so you could look out for them. You can have significant metabolic disease on the inside and look okay on the outside. These are the people that suddenly drop dead and shock us all because they looked fine. But if we could talk to them, they could tell us how they were not feeling fine. And you should know that metabolic syndrome hasn't always gone by that name. When we first discovered it, it was called Syndrome X. Then it was called insulin resistance. This is the name I actually like for that disease because it describes the problem. These are all the same problem and doctors have recognized this pattern for years. But the uncomfortable truth about it is we never knew what to do about it. There were no effective treatments and therefore not much emphasis on diagnosing it early. That changed with the rise of GLP-1 drugs like Ozempic and Monjaro. Not because metabolic disease is new, but now we have something to prescribe. So now metabolism is a hot topic. But let me be clear. Yes, these drugs help people lose the weight. And yes, weight loss improves metabolic health. But no, they didn't create a solution for something that didn't already exist. The simple solution for fixing metabolic disease is fixing your insulin. This is where diet matters. In general, we want insulin to be as low as possible as often as possible. Insulin is a hormone that goes up every time you eat. Eating fat doesn't really raise insulin. Eating protein raises it very little. Eating carbohydrates, especially the sugary kind you find in processed food, raises it through the roof. This is why I go crazy about how much sugar you're consuming, friends. What matters most when it comes to achieving a healthy weight, being a healthy healthy person in general is what you eat exactly, how often you eat it, and how much sugar it contains. This is why calories in, calories out doesn't work for most people. Did you know that sugar contains hardly any calories compared to the rest of the macronutrients? That model ignores the hormones. And I'm not talking about your sex hormones. Every time we say hormones in this country, people think about estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. These have such a minimal effect compared to the major hormones of metabolism. Number one is insulin, but also cortisol, adrenaline, and thyroid hormone. But these are all topics for another day. I'm telling you, get the insulin right and all these other hormones will play nice. You improve your metabolism by eating structured meals without snacking, by reducing sugar, especially refined sugar. That's the stuff in boxes and cans that's sitting on all the middle aisles that wanna tell you how healthy they are for you. You wanna be eating real food. This is how your insulin problem improves. This is how metabolic syndrome gets reversed. If you ignore the dimming of the lights going on in your home for long enough, eventually the power goes out. This is heart disease, diabetes, stroke, cancer, dementia. These are the problems we're trying to prevent. And we don't fix these problems by tearing down the house. We fix them by restoring the power. When you correct metabolism, the lights come back on. This doesn't take years. It can happen nearly overnight. I have a little program I call Jumpstart Sugar Detox. I teach it every month. We do it in five days. And yes, I take people off their medication in just that amount of time. And the people I work with don't just lose the weight. That's so wonderful. But they also begin thinking clearly, feeling more confident, being more functional day in and day out, feeling happier, lighter, and crazy energized. The awesome thing about that, they show up better in their own lives and for their loved ones. My friends, metabolism isn't a mystery and metabolic disease is not new. And it's not just about calories. It's about what happens to your energy when you're not fueling correctly. And the most important thing to know is this, it's fixable. Once you understand why metabolism fails, the solution becomes obvious.